In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a scale where we have the time at the bottom and the date at the very top where we specify the day, the weekday basically in bolded letters and we have the October and then the date number. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how to create a double scale with time and date in Chart.js. So what we're going to do here first of all is we need to go to Chart.js3.com getting started this specific link. And you can find this link as well in the description box. So once you're on here, scroll down and just copy this chunk of code here. If you want to understand this boiler template, make sure you watch this video here. Let's paste this all in there and then I'll just cut out the title here, put the title in here. Save, refresh, there we are. So what I'm going to do here is to maximize the size of this, saying here 80% for the chart box. There we are. And now what I want to do is I want to convert it into a date and time structure. To do that, I will need the date adapter. To get the date adapter, we need to go to chartjs.org, click here on ecosystem. And once you're here, we're going to search for the adapter. So we're going to select your adapters. And then I'll get in this case, I'll just get the locks on. I would say get one of these two. Don't use the moment uh, file because moment has been deprecated. So I'm taking here the locks on adapter. I'm going to scroll down and for the locks on, we need two JavaScript files. I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to put that in here. To make sure we put them all in there, make sure you have the chart.js file loaded first. Afterwards, we will load the official Luxon JavaScript file. And after that, we're going to load the chart.js adapter for Luxon. All right, so that's very important, this exact order. Let's save that, refresh, nothing happens here, of course. So let's start to do the next thing is converting a few of these dates in here. So what I'm going to say here, scroll down here first and let's go to the X scale. And on the X scale, what I want to do here is I'm going to say the type will be time and time is a string value, comma. But now we are allowed to activate the time object that is from the Luxon date adapter. So then what I want to do here is, well, for this one, we'll just say here for the time unit will be hour. And this is of course a string as well. If I save this refresh, you can see we will get an error here. Why? Because we don't have anything with a time in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everything and only put in two values. It's more than enough for this example. And I'm going to say here, well, let's say uh, 2022, 10 October, and today is 18. And let's copy that and we're going to say here this will be 19 if I save that uh, all right interesting there's a mistake in here unexpected Y identifier on number 94 let's scroll down here of course my bad make sure you have a comma here of course save refresh there we are so now we get this and this starts to look quite decent however what I want to do is I want to have a second skill at the very top here showing the day so whatever the day is for October 18 and of course I want to see here October and the date number or the day number basically so let's say Saturday October 18 if ever it would be Saturday so that would mean that I need a second scale here up to do that we can just say here we can do here down doesn't matter you can say scale number two and you can give it any name you want it doesn't matter as long as it understands what you want to do. And I'm just going to copy everything here. We say the time, but here the unit will not be hour. We're going to set this on day. And next we're going to put an enter here. We're going to say the position of this must be at the very top because we have the other one, the X scale, which is by default set at the bottom. So now we have up and down, as you can see, that looks quite nice. So you can see here we have this scale, but this scale has so or we have to do still a few items what I would like to do is I want to have this line here and make a nice border line here with a different color let's make this dark or black to highlight that a little bit more so to do this we're going to work on here on this area here we're going to say a comma and then what we're going to do here is we're going to say the ticks uh, or sorry, not even the ticks, but the grid. And I'm going to say here for the grid, we want the tick color. And the tick color are basically these tick marks here that you see. 
and we're going to give them a proper color so let's say tick color here make this black save refresh as you can see here now they are more clearly defined next what i want to do is i want to say here the border color which will pinpoint the border basically and that will be black as well make sure uh, black save there we are so we have this from left to right this specific border that is this border of the scale so once we have this what i want to do is i want to higher or make this a bit more higher because eventually this should be nearby here covering or indicating that this would be october 18 from this point all the way to there so how do we do this i'm going to say a comma and then we're going to say the tick length which would indicate how many pixels the tick is by default if I'm not mistaken, it is 8 pixels. So what we want to do is, if we can expect that this will be maybe about uh, 12 pixels plus 8, let's say 20 pixels in total. So we're going to say 20 pixels. If I save this, refresh, you can see what is happening. It pushes the scale a bit more down because of this here. For now, I don't have a solution for this going down here. So the only way to do this is to break this or remove this and make our own text for the scale so we're going to create a customized text for the scale to do this we're going to say a comma we're going to say it ticks and for the ticks we're going to indicate here to display this on false so it will not be shown there we are and we could probably hide the legend as well the legend has no value for us so let's do that one as well so in here you have the scales area so after the scales i'm going to say plugins and we're just going to indicate here uh, legend display equals false save refresh there we are that looks quite decent now what i want to do is i want to create a custom plugin to draw our custom item so in the options or at least after the options curly braces comma we're going to say plugins as well then we're going to give here the name scale or top scale i guess to the top scale that's the one we want to draw or at least the text of the top scale i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to say a constant top scale equals id although we won't be using the id so it doesn't matter if you put it or not but i'll just put it in there as i have it and i'm going to say here after data sets draw so after we draw the data set or we can even do it before the data set before data set draw why before or after because the scale will be drawn before they start to draw or before chart yes, draws these uh, bars in this case or lines and that's very important so then i'm going to say here the chart object arcs and plugin options although i won't be using the last two so once i have this what i want to do here now is to make an object destruction if you don't understand object destruction for chart yes, i have a video in the description box that says object destructuring for chart.js so make sure you understand that so i'm just going to get ahead here without explaining much of it because that's the video you should study I'm going to get to the chart area we'll be needing that and then i'm going to say here probably left top width might be useful and then right next what i want to do is i want to get the scales and for the scales i will specify oh sorry for the scales i will specify what exactly this one here x number two because scales right now we have three options the x y and this one here so i'm going to say here this x number two there we are so then what i want to do here is when we have this i guess we have here everything that we need we can start to work on drawing the text in here and what i want to make sure is we have two items we have the day and we have the october 9th 18 and here october 19 eventually so we have those two details as well so what we're going to do here is uh let's do a console log first and show you the scale x2 which is this one here you can just use that as a shorthand save refresh open up developer tab and then you can see here it looks multiple times but don't worry about that and what we really need to know is only one specific item here um the ticks that we're looking for here there we are we get the ticks where we have the value the value the major and the labels and basically the october 18 19 this is one of the labels that will be important but what we also need to know is the specific day of it but also the segment 
And if I refresh this, there you are. So you can see that it works again normal. The segment, what is important with the segment is this point all the way to that point at a certain length. That will be important later on. So let's start to uh, draw the basics, which is to create our, uh, what we can say here is the weekdays. Let's figure out how can we extract with this information here, the weekdays of the ticks. That's this value here. So to do this, what I want to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, x2, and we can just grab here dot ticks, because I want to grab the ticks, remember that. Then we have two items here, and then I can do here a, a for each loop. And what I want to do here then is I say here, for every tick and index, then I will do have this uh, function error expression, because this is basically a callback functionality. And then in here, well, we can start to uh, work on the date. And what we want to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, ctx, because I want to draw specific items. Say ctx font equals. I'm going to say here, I want bold, because this must be the bolded text. Next, what I want to do is 12 pixels. And finally, I want to have the font family sans serif. So we have this one. And the next thing what I want to do is, I want to say here, uh, I guess, ctx dot fill style and make sure we have the capital S and we're going to give this a nice black color so that will be a special color for the font and finally I want to put in here ctx.fill text and what we need to have here is basically the text the X position and the Y position in pixels Basically, what I want to do is I want to put it in here. So we're going to work on this. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all here, let's do here something that's quite simple. Test. And then what we're going to do here is let's make this 50 and 50. By doing this, save, refresh, we should see here something. And as you can see here, we're looping through it, but you might not notice it because it only shows here one time. So if I say 50 and a multiply uh, what is that? Multiply by index. And we can just say here multiply, let's do this one. Fifth or this. In an index, I'll just do a multiply by 50. Why? Because the first one is, of course, zero. So if I do it like this, we should see here two items, but uh, apparently not, of course, because we have a parenthesis missing. Save that, do that one. There we are. As you see, it goes down now. And I noticed that this tooltip here might be a annoyance to me or an, it's blocking our view. So I'm going to just delete the tooltip here. So here, uh, enabled equals false. Just hide it so we are not distracted by the tooltip. There we are. You can see here like this. So it works, but of course we need the date. And after that, we need to make sure it's going up here. So remember that this is the Y coordinates so what we could do here based with the y coordinates is we could just work here with the top which is the chart area and again uh, if you don't understand what chart area is i also have a video for that understanding chart area in chart js it's all in the description box i'm going to put it here at the top you can see here we have this one all right but then what we have to do is our x coordinates must be moved from here then there and you can see here maybe we should have some additional space for that well we can do that by the following, uh, we're going to say here ctx dot uh, text align, and the text align could be here probably uh, bottom. If I do that, it will push it up. Let's see. Well, apparently, it will not be that good. If that doesn't work, what I can do here is I'll just ignore this. I'll just say here minus five pixels. Why minus and not plus? Because I want to push it up. There we are. And you can see here later on we have to fix this as well but of course we need special coordinates for this we need to calculate that let's get first this date here working so what i want to do with the date is because i need to extract the text of this one here so if i go here in the console log we will see here what is in the tick save refresh open up developer tab and i see i have a double console log so i'm going to hide this or delete this one we don't need this one anymore it will just distract us. Save, refresh. 
there you are you can see here this is all the information that we have we want to make sure we get here I guess the value that's the one we need this is the timestamp value where we can say basically charges on a sensor ready because the date adapter that is October 19 but now I want to grab the day is it a Sunday Monday or Tuesday so for that we have the timestamp I'm going to use some basic JavaScript for this so if I do just only this say refresh you can see here we'll get of course oh, sorry not even like this my bad I want to do the tick but then I want to have the formula dot value as you can see here all right so refresh so then we have this here so as you can see we have this already double so what I want to do now I want to push that one to the other side so how do we do this one or well let's get the date first all right this is a Monday Tuesday or Wednesday so what I'm going to do here is just basic JavaScript date uh, conversion. So uh, for this, we're going to say a constant. Let's say number letter D, and we're going to say a new date. And the new date, I guess we can move this in here. Put it in here, and we're going to grab this tick value. Put that in there. That will be the new date. Once we do this, and if I put in this letter D in here we probably have now something new but you get a full details and we see we have a double because it's looping it twice so what I want to do now is I want to make sure that this tick date recognize what is the day uh, I guess the day or the weekday that we want so to do this first of all I need to have here I guess the weekdays so to get the weekdays what we need to do here is of course this here right now it understands the full date but which is basically a date object but I want to extract now only a specific item for this all we do here is if we do this we say dot and we can say here um, get day uh, of the item itself which is the tick value uh, let's put that in there. Let's grab this. All right. So you can see your number two and number three are both in there. So what we're going to do now is we want to grab a single item or at least the date of this. So we know the number of it, but the number is only the number of the day. And we need to make now a quick array for that. And I'm sure that there's better ways, but right now I'll just make it very simple. So I'm going to say here weekdays. I'm going to say here, this will be Monday. Then we have here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, what we have more, Saturday and Sunday. All right, so we have this. And then what we can do here is we can just put this array in here. And then we're going to say here the following. We want to make sure that what is the index number of this and then later on we can just move it later in position so if I save this refresh you can see here Tuesday and Wednesday all right so we've got this information here so now we've got this information we can now start to move this well let's put it more and better in position here but also in here uh, all right, so what we're going to do is this 50 here is a hard-coded number, so we don't want this. And we have now this array value here. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's go in the following. Uh, oh, of course. So what we want to do here is, sorry, I'm just, my mind, I guess it's processing everything. So what we need to do now is the following, and this is a tricky one we need to work with the amount of ticks we have and what we want to do with the ticks is to calculate the width of this because we want to have this one and then afterwards we have to move here but we need to calculate this how much space from this point all the way to that point is luckily we have chart area here already we have this width value so what we need to do is two items number one we need to calculate how many ticks we have and number two we need to know and how many pixels is this segment all the way to here so what I'm going to say here is constant and we can say in this constant here is the tick length and the tick length is basically 
EMI, the amount of ticks we have, and which is on our x scale number two dot ticks dot length. Calculate that, and that should be, if I'm not mistaken, number two, of course, because we only have two ticks at this, as of now. Let's do that one. You can see here number two, two, two. That shows nicely. So the next thing what I want to do is I want to calculate then the segment. So I'm going to say constant segment. And if you don't know what I'm referring to is the segment is basically from this point to here. So for the segment, which is luckily quite easy, is we have to calculate from this point all the way to here, which is the width of the chart area. That's why we have this one already. This is the amount of pixels of the chart area divided by the, the tick links. The length, sorry. So once we have that, you can do your console log, save, refresh, and you will see here now, depending on the situation, it is, did I have everything? The segment should be that one, that is, if I'm not mistaken, 315. I guess that could be, that could be the case. We are, well, we can check if this is true. If I do it like this, put it in here, there we are. So you can see here we have this length here and what I want to do is the following because we're still not here well in position but what I need to do is here calculate this area here from this point to here this is what we call the left area of the chart area which is the left so what I'm going to do here is just say left plus segment multiply by index and we have here the index so what we can do here is give this priority Save, refresh. There we are. So now we move them both because index zero, it starts index zero and then after get index one. So this works all quite nice. What I want to do here is give it additional five pixels. So we have, a, so we are a little bit away from this line or let's say six pixels. Six plus that. All right. Save, refresh. That looks much better. Next one is to put in the label of the ticks. So what we're going to do here, what I want to do is, well, console log, what I'm, if you are not familiar with the labels, what I'm referring to here is the tick. If I save that, refresh, and let me just remove the console logs here. So we have a nice clean area. This as well, uh, I guess we can just remove all of that there. Save, refresh, open up developer tab, click on one of these. You can see here the label gives us the October 19. And I'm not sure if October 19 now is Wednesday or Thursday. I can later on test that because maybe uh, the weekdays uh, it starts with index zero. And if, it, if it's index zero, it would be Sunday, depending on the, the structure of it. So we have to check that later on just to be sure. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, is I want to say here dot label. Then I should get here October 18 and 19. All right. So what we can do is the following, because I want to have it exactly besides it. So what I'm going to do here is a lot of these things we can just copy paste. I'm going to copy this all, put it in here. But in this case, I will say it's not bold anymore. No, I want to make this just standard. And then this black, I will change into the basic gray. So I say RGBA 102, 102, 102, 0, or 1. So it's nice gray color which is the standard gray color that Chart.js uses for the entire scale. So now we have the official color. What I want to do next is the positioning. And the positioning is a bit more tricky because we need to grab this value here. And um, what we need to do, and you can see here, if you look very carefully, I noticed that the coloring here is probably a bit off. We're going to work on that one. Oh, of course, the reason why it's right now off is because we're going to, it's grabbing the same data that's on top of it. So don't worry about that. So what we're going to do as well, we want to move that a little bit here. So how do we do this? Well, there's a nice trick. I'm going to say your constant text width. Because what I want to know is the width of this text that we have. So we know how many pixels we have to move to the right side. So to calculate this, we're going to say ctx.measure text. And then we're going to put in this value this array value, and then we're going to say here dot width. By doing that, we calculate the width in pixels of this one here. 
So once we have this, and I can just show you, let's do a console log in here, you will see how many pixels in width this is. Save, refresh, you can see here approximately depending on the text, Wednesday and Thursday, I guess Wednesday is shorter, only 29, 21 or 22 pixels approx, and this one is 25.1 pixels. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just grab this and just say here on the X area for the X position because we have to move it to the right plus this. If I save this, refresh, you can see here now we have this but we should have a little bit more text or space between here, let's say 3 pixels. So we're going to say here we can do another plus 3 pixels if I save that. There we are. All right, so now what we want to do is to have the label of October. So we're going to change this into the label. We just take label here, remember that one that we have, and let's remove all of this, put that in there. Save that, refresh, and there we are. So now we have this, and we have them all working. So let me just only confirm if this is all correct, that October is 18, how can we confirm this? Well, basically I could just change the date uh, 18 would be Wednesday. So if that is Wednesday, uh, what we can do is we let's put this on 16. Then we should get here a Sunday, Monday. All right, that's Monday. If I do now here on 15, we get a Sunday. And let me just confirm that by checking my calendar. All right, so I checked my calendar, and apparently I made a mistake. My bad. It should be. Uh, this needs to be Sunday at the very beginning because the lowest value is considered the Sunday value. So it starts with Sunday and then Tuesday is 18 October. All right, but this is basically the way to do it here. And you can see here we could even maybe give it a bit more pixels in space. If, uh, and space, let's see here. Um, Mm, what is that? I guess maybe six. Something like that. But that's basically it. You can always play around with that to give it a proper item here. However, this is basically the way to create a nice scale with some proper design with the date here and the time at the bottom. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to filter the dates as well. So we have a uh, drop down. In that case, I'm going to recommend this video here where you can select a starting and ending date to filter the chart and showing only that specific uh, segment of that data. So in that case, I recommend you this video here.